Hello, beautiful souls. We are going to cover the more of the virtues, the five virtues of the order of the blue rose. If you have not seen those videos yet, please check them out. Start with video one. Um, Aurelia joins me again today. Hello, Aurelia. Hello. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. I'm glad to have you. It's so nice to have another beautiful being soul energy to bounce off this information it's a little tedious to just do it all by myself and so I definitely welcome the company <laughs> but you're so good <laughs> well thank you um so as the five virtues of the order of the blue rose go it's truth peace love harmony and valor we've covered truth today we are covering peace and I'm going to give you just a couple of things before we get into the dialogue of it. Um, peace, as it is defined in our lowly books and things, the absence of war and other hostilities. Second is an agreement or a treaty to end hostilities. Are you sensing a theme here? Mm, uh-huh. The third one is freedom from quarrels and disagreements, harmonious relations. Out of those three, I only really resonate with one thing, harmonious relations. <laughs> I fully agree. Everything else is just being in your face negative. And it's exactly how our culture views so many things, right? Right either going to be this way or we're going to fight about it like and when we tend to go to the negative first yeah it's like we're programmed not to see the bright side of things but to immediately think oh, what's wrong yeah so now i will give you andalusia's version <laughs> of def defining peace Peace is not only an action regarding hostile acts peace comes from within your soul essence that has healed through balancing the divine feminine, divine masculine, and inner child. It also requires quieting the ego to reclaim your balance and your peace. A silent mind and an open heart creates a peaceful life. Oh, I think it's beautiful. I think that's better encompassing of the peace that people seek it's it's far greater and can accomplish as much as something not being hostile inner peace is a treasure you cultivate within yourself true luxury lies in finding peace amid life's storms and being unshaken by external chaos it's the profound sense of balance that comes from embracing who you are and letting go of what you cannot control. When you invest in your inner well being and you unlock a sense of fulfillment that suppresses the material possession, this focus on nurturing your mind and yourself, because the richest treasure is the one that is cultivated within and bring serenity and peace to your soul. When we conquer the egoic mind, the key to finding your peace is in your soul. The mind creates a situation where we ponder the past and the future, and it keeps you out of enjoying the moment, the now moment where your truth of who you are is being discovered every single second. In this moment, there's always freedom and there is always peace, which is why egos drive us to feel anxiety, nervousness, and fear of past and future events. Don't let your mind seduce you away from the serenity and the tranquility and the stillness of the now moment pulling you back to the past or forward to the future. Stay in the moment and dare to consider that you can have peace in the now. What'd you think about that? I love that. Dare to consider. 
Yeah. I mean, allow yourself the opportunity to dream and then to choose what works for you in that moment. I have some notes myself regarding peace and the ideas that came through with it. And they're very similar. No surprise. (laughs) They're in a little bit of a different vein. Mm -hmm. But as you're talking about the now moment and nurturing yourself, quieting your mind, that sort of thing. When I, when I got quiet, think about peace. The first thing that came through was peace is the foundation of deep knowing and grounding. You know, when you're fully grounded within yourself, you're that oak tree that when a large breeze comes by, you're not going to topple right over. Right. Your, your leaves may ruffle a bit. You might move a little bit, but ultimately you have a deep peace within. And it's not something that externally can take it away when you choose to have it within you. That doesn't right. mean that it's easy, but it's also a choice in every moment. Do I choose peace or do I choose chaos? You know, what you feel on the outside, excuse me, what you feel on the inside shows on the outside as well. So if you have a lot of clutter and chaos in your environment, you most likely feel that chaos internally as well. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea of it's okay to be creative. It's okay to keep the things that matter to you. I mean, you don't have to throw everything out, but at the same time, what's important to you is the magazine that you bought five years ago and are keeping because you might read it really worth it. Is it worth your energy? Is it worth that clutter or can you let it go? Put it in that yeah. recycling bin and free yourself. Yeah. Give yourself that that more peace. So you also don't feel the guilt almost that we give ourselves when we say, hey, there's all this that I, I, I bought and I'm going to use it, but I haven't yet. Inner peace. And I know you are like a master at this as far as just let it go. <laughs> Get rid of it. I don't need that thing, that item. Let it go. Yeah. It took me a while to get there though, you know, and while you're relating that I was going back to, um, events in my life where I held on to things because it was the, the last tangible connection to a person that no longer existed. And Mm -hmm. it kept, it keeps you because it kept me reliving that, that distance, reliving the separation, reliving the event. And there's only so much closure and healing you can do whenever you continue to relive it. I'm not a big fan of reliving trauma in in an effort to heal it. I know that you have to go back there. You have to feel it. You have to recognize the feelings that you maybe you ran from initially. You have to feel it in order to heal it. But I know people to this very day that have rooms in their home, they just leave it. It's like in stasis because the being that used to live in that room has transitioned and everything and everything about that room and that person is just like staying exactly the same untouched. Well, there's no healing there. No matter what you think you have done, you're not healing. You're not allowing yourself to move and progress forward. You're, you're choosing to stay stuck. And in that you're choosing to continue to engage with heartache and turmoil and pain. And so you have made the choice, the conscious choice to create a reality where you're constantly sad. You're constantly, um, engaging in the transition trauma in the loss in the, in the missing and the longing and all of that. So you're missing out in the now you have a beautiful life waiting for you that you've pushed aside while you are continuing to relive things from the past. And it's so freeing when you can finally bring yourself to that point of unpacking the boxes, clearing out the clutter, getting rid of all the things, because in reality, we don't need any of that 
to remember those beings that are with us, that were with us and transitioned because it's the energy of who they are that we can still actually connect to. When you, when you escape the illusion of death and you realize that they're just energy that transferred from a matter being right next to you to an energy being that has infinite possibilities. To me, it's freeing. To me, it was uh, a release that I no longer had to carry this baggage around with me. So that's how I got to the point where I can say, yeah, that's not my timeline. That's not for me now. Like it can mean something so, so significant for someone else. And for me, it's just not for me. I got there because I did the work. Was the work easy? Absolutely not. But it was vital. It was vital to me growing and moving forward, understanding that my roots go deeper than just the leaves that fell off the tree. I have a message from Archangel Chamuel. Now, I visited with him back in the Divine Light Ray series. And so that video will be linked in the description of this video as well. Peace cannot be fully appreciated unless one has experienced chaos. Peace does not mean being passive. It does not mean not taking a stand. Peace does not mean keeping your truth inside. Quite the opposite. One can only have peace as they have stood in their truth defended their sovereignty, reclaim their power, and remain steadfast in integrity amongst all scenarios. Consciousness aligns to our energy. If you say you want peace, but your actions and thoughts are continually inciting less than peace, you are in conflict, creating conflict. So conflict is what you find. To those beings who seek true peace, it does not come provided to you from sources outside of yourself. Your peace is cultivated, protected, and embodied all within your own being, for that is all you can control. If you have suffered turmoil through every relationship demonstrated for you, from your own parents and grandparents, siblings to your own friends, when all demonstrations have been tumultuous, you will be drawn to peace, yet lack the ability, the knowledge, and the practice that is required to cultivate it. As your consciousness has not learned yet and evolved past chaos, yet this could also be a trigger to more chaos. It's the fear of the unknown. With opening your heart to accept and embody loving, peaceful practices, one can elevate themselves up and over the hurdles of a chaotic family. Those who seek deeper peace appreciate it in a way that is born along the journey back to wholeness by surviving many storms. It is inside those storms that one understands what true peace can provide. Reminder to all who seek peace in all ways, relationships, family, community, etc. Call on me, Archangel Shamuel, for guidance and support in cultivating, maintaining, and spreading peace. It is my joy to assist in humanity's search to embody peace. Wasn't that awesome? Yes, he is so, <laughs> I want to say excited but without the giddiness that goes yeah. along with excitement. Yeah. Very energetic about this and passionate. I'll go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Passionate about assisting. I have a message that came with him as well, talking about applying that in your life. He recommended to visualize, you know, what does peace look like to you? What does peace feel like to you? you know, and what steps can you take to make what you see and what you feel happen. What steps can you take? They can be baby steps or they can be giant leaps. But in order to facilitate peace within yourself, it has to be your choice and it requires the internal decision. Yes, he's very, 
very passionate about assisting us with this. Yeah. And it, it reminds me of whenever we're helping, um, someone exercise their throat chakra for the first time and they, they've lived their life being very quiet and cognizant that they don't agree with everything happening around them, but they don't want to ruffle any feathers, right? They don't want to rock the boat, Mm -hmm. but a lifetime of that causes issues in the body. And so they don't know where to begin because they've never engaged in speaking their truth. So this is very similar to that. If you've never experienced a peaceful existence, you may even struggle with envisioning what peace even looks like. And so if you find yourself in that scenario, I invite you to start journaling. And journaling in the beginning may feel a little clunky or cumbersome because we're trained to write from our brain, right? To outline things and it be all very methodical. But journaling is meant to bypass the brain, bypass the ego, and just allow the energy to flow. So with practice, you will begin to allow the energy that is your truth to come out. And as that occurs, you'll find that you'll, your, your first couple of attempts are just going to be really emotionally charged. It's the things that have been just dying to come out of you for however long. And it may not make a lot of sense, but getting the energy out will make you feel better. So eventually you'll get in the practice of doing this and you'll start to get in the flow of energy where this is the release of energy. Your, your body, your soul understands it. And before you know it, you will have literally filled up notebooks because you have a voice, you have a peaceful position, you want to share this, but you're surrounded by people in your vortex that want none none of it. Doesn't mean you have to keep it inside. You have to find an outlet for it until you know what that looks like, until you know what that feels like, until you can find the words, just journaling out things will help you navigate back to that energy of peace and calm and serenity it's you have to start somewhere and that's a pretty benign way where then you can work up to maybe taking some long walks in nature and speaking your truth and then you realize that that's peace that that's peaceful because you don't really understand what's coming around you when you're in nature there's all sorts of activities happening we're not aware of but you still center your peace with the earth and the divine and salon, our beautiful, great sun. Um, So there are ways you can go about it. If you've never seen peace in your life, if everything in your whole life has always been chaotic, you're not going to find it outside of yourself. You have to start within. And oftentimes journaling is the best way to do that. Were you reading my mind? Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Just asking you with your segue from journaling, which is such a gift and it doesn't even have to make sense. I mean, it's just, it's getting it out and putting the words on paper. You don't have to look at it again either. Yeah. Just free yourself from those ideas. Uh, We mentioned nature. I I was just writing a note as you were talking about it. Um, You know, the weather, sometimes it's great. Sometimes it's not that inviting to get out in nature, but you can even turn on a YouTube video or something listening to bird song. Or the beautiful vistas that they show in the like, the lovely oceans or the mountaintops or whatever it may be in the gentle music or the high frequency music. Put in your earbuds and just allow, allow yourself to feel that and to tune out all of the daily chaos. Just being, I think, a lot of times aware of what we're consuming is the positive first big step toward inner peace turning off those channels, making those conscious decisions. Yeah. I know when I was still nursing, um, that's how I got through the last two years was I kept an earbud in my ear and I kept high frequency music playing and it helped offset the chaos of that life, that job. And um, it's what saved me many days because I could escape in a sense Yes, my body was still there. Yes, I was still working. Yes, I still engaged with the beings I needed to work with, but it gave me a place to escape to when I could. 
and um, it was a bridge. <laughs> and it's definitely, there are things you can do. There are always choices that you can make that are higher consciousness that serve yourself in a way that what you've been doing doesn't serve you. And only you can decide to do that, right? You have to come to this decision on your own because it's going to be you that follows through with doing the work. And so whether it's talking whenever you go out on your walks or having the high frequency music on or a combination of all of that, along with journaling, whatever it looks like, try your very best to navigate to where there is peace, where, where whether you have peace for five minutes or five hours or five days, like you have to start somewhere. And so I invite you to, to um, try and see what it feels like. I mean, you may really pick up a, an infinity for writing, mm -hmm. for journaling. The other thing is if things come out on the, in journaling and it's some trauma or it's some memories that you really hadn't visited in a while and you'd rather not go back there again, that's really a, a very good form of shadow work where you can put a big black X through it and burn it, send it to the violet flame to transmute those energies so that you are healing and not uh, retaining that energy in your being, you literally let it go. And so you're freeing yourself up of that layer of shadow. Do you have anything else, Aurelia? I don't. No, I feel we've said a lot <laughs> in a lot of good ways, a lot of good, just so many examples because peace is a choice and it's such an important part of, of those five virtues. Obviously peace is there for a reason and it's the internal work that lets you get there. So I'm grateful yeah. to be a part of it and you know, it's not easy, but it's, yeah. it's a daily choice and we're all working on it. We're all going together in this forward motion and saying, oh, I feel the peace. Wait, something's here. Okay, let me address it. Let me work through this and let it go and heal. And then find that peace once more. And it's even deeper. Yeah. And people that have never really experienced peace, um, you know, you, you're going to feel one of two things. It's going to feel really good and you're going to want more of it. You're going to do what it need, you need to do to, to have more of that. Or it's going to feel so uncomfortable that you're not sure what to do with that yet. You're going to seek out more chaos. So mm -hmm. that will be the, the way that you navigate things and the choices that you make. Um, the virtue of peace is very integral in living in the way, in a balanced way of those five virtues. It's vital. You can watch the video, The Third Ray of Creative Intelligence with Archangel Chamuel. The link again is in the description of this video. There are plenty of nuggets in that video and this one that can help you um, discern which is your best path to peace in your own existence. Thank you for joining us today and I'll see you again next time. Thank you.